How you doing guys? Welcome back to another update. In this video we're going to be talking through a couple of subscriber teams. So I've got a few guys to send me a picture of their squads and we're going to analyze them today. Talk a little bit about the makeup of your squad, how you'd want that to look if you're looking to spread money across all different positions or how you'd want to do that. Um, but firstly guys, I've just created a Discord group which I'm going to put the, the link in the description but please jump in there. I think that's going to be a really good option, especially come during the season it's for things like late mail and just and just talking amongst yourselves you can look at each other's teams in there and stuff but we'll build a bit of a community along with the youtube page just allows it for easier uh easier chat between everyone there but to start is we're going to go through this first one here so latrell's lads he's got 50k in salary and let's have a go so how we're going to look at this is do these people here are they guns or do they have value or are they cash cow all right, if they don't, then there's a good chance we probably don't want them in our squad. So we'll start with Egan. Looks like he's in here close to 80 minutes and has a little bit of upside, which is great. There's no issues with that as a starter. And as we said, guys, especially as we get closer to the season, we'll have a clearer picture as to how these guys are going to go, or where they're going to play. But we'll just uh, play a B as for right now. In the middle there, we've got McInnes as captain, which is great. So we've got one of the top three guys there that score an extra 10 points. So we've got McInnes, Cleary, and Haas are the, are the three guys that scored that extra 10 points over everyone. So having one of them as captain is going to be great for your team. You get that extra 10 points. Leota looks like he's going to get the starting spot and has a little bit of upside. Christian Welsh, similar thing. He played really good the back end of the year. I, he's one of my smokies to, to average close to 50 this year and make a bit of cash. All right, we head to the edge and we haven't got a gun in our edge position, which is slightly concerning. I'd, I'd like to have a fair bit of cash up top. Especially, you know, not having a, a gun hooker, obviously got McInnes in the mids, but not having that there and then not having a gun in the edge is, I think, is going to pose a few issues. For Tyler Mariner, I don't believe has much upside. He scored well last year, you know, close to an average of 50 and I don't see much further from there. And then having having a cash cow as your second player in there and having him not guaranteed to start may pose a few issues as well. I, have, I personally have him on the bench at the moment, which we'll see later, but... Um, something to think about. In the half position, having two guns, I think, is probably a little bit too much. Just for the fact that I just, in my recent video, I did, did one on, on the half position. And I see there's a lot of value in that middle in that middle tier. So at least having one of those guys, I think, would be important. And not spending a, a lot of your money here in the half position for Cherry Evans, who, yes, is your out-and-out -out gun and will, and will score you those exact points, but doesn't have the upside. And Munster, I think, has a little bit of upside, especially with his chance of kicking goals as well. But yeah, something to think about in the half position. You might be able to use a little bit of cash elsewhere in the squad. Coming down to center, we've got Avrilo and Fagi. Uh, Fagi. I'm not sure how to say his name yet, but there's a chance that he doesn't play. And in terms of Avrilo, we're also not sure where he's going to play at this stage of the season. He might play a number six role, which which would be great, and you're happy to have him as a starting center. But when you've got guys like, like Roberts and Bird, who I think are a little bit undervalued in the center position, you might have to change that a little bit. And we come down to, to wing fullbacks, and you've got Trob Brimson and, and Tessie New. Um, I have no issues with this pairing. You've got a couple of guys who should be able to score well, and then you've got one that's a little bit of a speculative play, but we we don't want to spend an overload of money at the wing fullback spot. Let's head to the bench. So we've got Gilbert, Ricky, Lamb, Braley as our four. Really, really happy with that. No issues there. And then we've got Townsend sitting on the on the emergencies there at 446k. I think he has a little bit of upside just with the fact that Johnson's going to be out for a little bit, but he's never been someone who's been a great scorer. And already at 446, he's probably you know maybe got 50 to 100k upside possibly. But if you're going to have him in the team, you definitely want him in your top four playing. Um, you've got Schuster who may play Moylan, who I'm not too sure about, just the fact that he's never been a great scorer. And you've got Connor Watson down there as well. So. No issues with the bench, obviously don't know how it's going to go at the moment, but just, yeah, it's probably a little bit more money you could spend in some of these up top positions, and they're not sure about the centers, but other than that, it's a it's a solid start for a preseason team. We'll uh, move along to our next one there. All right. So we got try scores, tries. Let's make that a bit bigger for us. Cool. We start with Harry Grant. No issues with him. He's a gun. He should score well in a storm system when they play uh, for a team that's going to go well. And he's someone to spend a little bit more more money in the mid section. So happy with Tino McInnes as captain. Great Takiaho. A lot of people think he's got a fair bit upside, but I don't see it as much. Yes, he might kick goals, but he's kicked goals a point last year, and he's around a fifty point player 
has been his whole career anyway. So I don't see him getting closer to 60 like some people are thinking. But yeah, each their own. I don't think he's going to go down in, in value and he'll score well. Harris is a, on the edge there and he's got the, the, the dual position. He's great. He should be scoring closer to 60. And then Harabu and Nahara. If he gets his starting spot, he's a great, great option. And I'm okay with that at this stage. Munster and Lamb, really happy with these two. Munster is being a gun and having a little bit of upside there with uh, taking a bigger role and possibly kicking. Lamb, you'd, ho you'd assume that he's going to take the Kyle Flanagan role and score hopefully similar. Somewhere between 45 and 50 would be great for Lamb, but we'll have to wait and see. He's got some upside anyway. Avarillo and Bird, again, no, no issues with this centre pairing. Bird should, uh, should score better than his price at 374. And you come down the bottom, there's a decent amount of money spent on the wing fullbacks, but what this does is take out the speculation of, of a cheapy guy um, hanging out in your wing fullback and stinking it up and, and playing terribly. But we've got Sheck, Trebojevic, and Staines, which Roger is priced at where you think he would be, maybe a slight upside in the fact that he didn't have many attacking sets last year, but in a team that went fairly well, he didn't, you know, he just he scored accordingly. And Staines comes in after a couple of a couple of really good games at a price of four forty five. So nothing nothing crazy out, out nothing outstanding here in terms of things that I'd change. And then the benches, all the cheapies. We got Tomoko on there, which I, who I don't think will play, and maybe at some point in the year, and then Walker. So he's really really gone heavy in the starting in the starting thirteen, and then and then gone a little bit lighter. On the bench, and I imagine a bunch of these are going to have to change. So a few of the starting side will have to change too. But yeah, something to think about when you come later in, down later on down the track. But really happy with this team so far. And guys, if you're enjoying this, please please just subscribe and the like button. I really appreciate the the support. We go into the goaded guns. Alrighty, it's nice and clear. This screenshot, six k in the bank. McInnes, as captain, beautiful to power Takiyaho. Got Bradley in the side at the moment, which he. It, he even said himself he should be out for the first few weeks, so that'll have to change. Tapao has a Tapao has a little bit of upside. I'm happy with that, and you can see he's spent a lot of cash up top, which is which is usually a good sign. Harrison for feed up, both going to be great. Moylan, I'm not sure as ha having him as his starting half. I don't think he's going to score very well. I think there's better options in in there for the half. He could possibly have him on the bench, but yeah, not sure about that. First one here with Kelly in the centres. So Kelly has a little bit of upside with the Titans team that's going to go uh, a decent amount better this year. They're going to have some, have a, going to have some improvement, and he he does score well in the centres there. Kelly and Avrilo, no no worries with the centres at this stage. And then moving down to wing fullback, Trebojevic and Valentine Holmes. Does Valentine Holmes have does Holmes have some upside? I'm not sure at the moment. Given the fact that Cowboys are going to be a pretty average team again, I don't see too much upside with him. So I'd probably spend my money elsewhere, but. We'll uh, work it out as, as we go along. Moving to the bench, you've got Ricky, who's not sure if we're going to play. Gilbert's a decent option. Tex Hoy, looks like Pong is going to be out for a, close to four to six weeks. I said six weeks, but who knows with um, with recovery time. So he should get a, a nice slot at fullback there, and we'll see how he goes. He should be able to score better than his, his price at 23. Uh, Jason Saab, who knows if he's going to play. And Otto Kamanu. For the Tigers, uh, may get a bench spot as well at the TV price. So a lot of people are going real, real light on the bench, and and usually we see once we get closer to the season that that a lot of these guys won't actually start, and then we have to change our teams. But that's um that's where we're at at the moment with that with this squad. A couple of changes needed, and then we come to this one. We've got 111k in the bank, which is perfect. Cook, McInnes, Tino, and Welsh. Happy with that. Corey and Angus. No issues there. Angus is going to be a top line gun in the edge position with Tohu. Both going to be the two best for the year. Lamb and Munster, another co uh, popular combination. Avrilo Roberts, also fine with that. A few people picking Avrilo. Hopefully he starts for everyone. And then you got Tessie New, Trebojevic and Brimson. Very similar squad to that last one. Then we move over to the to the bench and, and very similar. You got a few guys. Fusatua, I probably wouldn't think about having in your squad. I don't think he's uh, too important given the fact he doesn't he's never really scored well yes he's cheap and he's in his dual position but he's just going to stink up the the squad there and he might have to play randomly and get your 15 or 20 which is which is not important uh, which is not good sorry and then you got Schuster and Otakamanu a few guys that yeah again may not play and having Bird on the on the bench now I'm not sure about him 
being on the bench. If he plays in the back row, I think he's going to be a really good option. But that's that one there. All fairly similar. And then we move to our last one here. Braley up top. First one does have Braley in a while, which is good. I think he's definitely going to score a minimum of 40. He's priced at just over 30, which is great. Haas, McInnes, and Farmer Suli. So Haas, I'm not sure about having him as captain. I think he's going to be getting less minutes and I think a slight drop in pri uh, points. So I'm thinking maybe around a 65 average, 67 average, rather than a 73 where he was, whereas you can't see McInnes changing too much with his average uh, and the factors of a little bit looming over him at the moment. He's a bit of an interesting pick. for Fafita and Harawir and Naira, no issues there. Munster and Lamb, awesome. Bird of Rilo, Papnaus and Trebojevic, and Brimson, a fair bit of cash spent back here. I'd possibly think about taking a little bit of money away from here and, and spending some on the bench. Again, just for the fact that you've got like blokes like Ben Trebojevic, Schuster, uh, maybe maybe Ricky and then Simonson not being a great option. Uh, upgrading one of these guys to maybe a four or 500k Guy to, to use on the bench as, as some good story, scoring, I think, could, could be ideal. But uh, other than that, I'm really happy with this, this team as a starter. Um, yeah, guys, if you can DM me on Facebook or or send through an email of your team, I'm, I'm happy to help out. But um, other than that, that's, that's the teams. And here's a little look at my team. So we haven't got too much going on here. Left hooking option open at the moment. I'm not sure if I'm going to play like Braley and Little as a, as a starter and on the bench. And leave McInnes in, in the mid as captain there. But Tamalolo is a definite for me. He's my number one staple. Tamalolo and Harris, I think, are going to form a nice pairing there of guys that aren't going to play Origin uh, that are going to help me out there. Tino looks like he's undervalued at this stage. I think he's going to be closer to a 700k player, so nothing crazy, but that's where he's at at the moment. I said Tohu's there. I think Lamb's going to be a great option, similar to what Kyle Flanagan did last year. And if he does that, he's probably a couple hundred k undervalued, which is great. Other half position, I'm not sure at the moment. The same with the edge. There's a bunch of guys that are in the cheapy bracket. You've got Tom Gilbert, these kind of guys. Depends where the team lists end up as to if I go a gun in that edge position or in the hooker position, someone like a Damian Cook, or or keep it to a cheapy and spend up a little bit elsewhere. It also depends really on, on what happens in the centers and wing fullbacks. I'm trying to spend too much in, 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 this, uh, in these positions, but... We'll see what we have to do. Tessie New looks like he should get the center spot, but again, we don't know, and he's just going to be penciled into my in, into my team, and if he does play, then then great, I'll keep him, but this last wing fullback spot, I think, is going to be a bit of an issue. And the only guys, I, it looks like Bloor's going to at least get some minutes, even if it's on the bench to start the year, but if he starts, everyone's going to have him. Um, Little should score really well, and I think he's going to be one of the better cash cows, especially for the first six to eight weeks of the year. But... Yeah, that's all I've um all I've done at the moment. I've I've played around with popping you know whole teams into like finishing off the whole team, but again, it's just going to change so often, and and all these guys at the moment are, we're not sure where they're going to end up. So here we are, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got a little bit out of it in terms of how I like to look at making a team. As I said most of the big dogs I want in this in this consistent position because if you have a couple of big big guys in in the wing fullback, for example. They're very streaky. You could have, you could start. They could start really well, and you can get off to a great start. But if you, if your sixty k, uh, sixty point average player gets a thirty or forty, your first couple of games has a slow start. It really puts you behind the eight ball. Whereas your guys up top aren't going to do that. Just something to think about when you're making your team. But yeah, as I say, guys, hope you enjoyed. Please hit like, like and subscribe if you did, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.